You're doing this new docu-series now, yeah. Translash, great yeah. title. What do we see in Translash? Mm -hmm. We're at a moment of social backlash. And so one of the things that my own process of transitioning sparked in me was, what's this link between a backlash and leaning forward, right? And what does that say about the moment that we're in? And I have to say that Donald Trump's election was a spur in me to accelerate my process. And I found in talking to other people that I'm not alone in that. <laughs>
to ban various rights that we have, to target and other us, which sets us up for violence. I'm lucky enough to know people like you <laughs> and to be able to sit down and actually answer the questions that I have. Is this a really good time to transition? In 2017, um, we had the highest number of hate violence related homicides, the highest number of single incident hate violence homicides that we had ever counted in this country. People are in our communities are having a really hard time across the country. People are calling us over and over again. You might experience multiple incidents of violence um, just in the course of your everyday life. You might be traumatized by just the impact of the hate that we're seeing in the world that's playing out in terms of policies that are playing out in, you know, what we might call sort of the daily incidents of violence. I really wish we had never coined the term microaggressions because aggressions are aggressions and they have impact. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. It's an intense time to be trans. <laughs> there are trans people that are visible across the board. I really try to just like monitor my space before I like go anywhere and make sure I'm able to have an exit plan or have um, some kind of allyship with people that are around me. Make sure I'm like, I, that's why I look at people like, okay, I know if someone's going down, that person would get up and kind of help me out. I think we're, we've never been so visible, so people are looking for us. Mm. Like, that's something I notice is, like, people are really looking to clock us and, like, really looking, like, like, who's trans or, like, if you stand out in some way, like, scrutinizing you. Trans women of color in particular are most impacted in our community by violence, particularly homicide. And we've seen across the country a number of LGBT community centers and safe spaces also under attack in a way that I think we haven't really seen in recent history. This documentary isn't political. It talks about policy, but the policies are driven by politics. What do you see as some of those key issues that you mentioned for trans people and gender nonconforming people right now in the United States? We have a president now, uh, Trump, and an administration that is being very clear about their um, disinterest in advocating for trans people and, and keeping us uh, protected. You can't answer the question of what's going to happen to transgenders who are in the military now. Shouldn't you have been able to answer that basic question with Look, a policy of this magnitude? Look, I think sometimes you have to make uh, decisions, and once he made a decision, he didn't feel it was necessary to hold that decision, uh, and they're going to work together with the Department of Defense to lawfully implement it. Last year, LGBT rights, you basically answered Ms. Clark's question saying that states should be flexible on it. I don't think being uh, flexible on whether or not someone has rights or not matters. It should be you have rights, and that's it, period. Last, uh, in the February of this year, your department said it wouldn't investigate or take action on any complaints filed by transgender students who are banned from restrooms that match their gender identity. Question being, how does the department intend to investigate and act upon claims of transgender students denied access to restrooms corresponding to their gender identity in the sixth and seventh court uh, circuits? And I'll stop there because I have seconds. We have continued to protect the rights of students as defined under Title IX and have continued to do so and to consider all of those matters brought to the Office for Civil Rights. We will continue to do so until the, either the Supreme Court or Congress clarifies the law with regard to transgender access to bathrooms, athletic uh, locker rooms, and athletic teams. Uh, that is not an area where law has been clarified. This department is not going to make law. We are going to continue to enforce laws that we are uh, given to do. So you won't back the courts, thank you. I definitely had assumed that I would probably medically transition after grad school and after possibly having a child. When Trump hit office, the fear of losing everything became very real. My insurance was covering at 80%. Um, so I just didn't, I didn't want it, that to lose that opportunity because without it, I probably would have paid 20 something thousand dollars for just top surgery. Mm -hmm. When I want top and bottom, my dating life 
has been almost on hold because I, me having sex with someone, I want to feel completely comfortable in my body. Life is not promise. And yes, many people may say that transitioning to a trans woman is even more dangerous, but I'd rather go out in fullness than stay here and be broken in aspects. You know, so to me, it is not only a life change, it's, it's a political change. It's a, it's a statement that I know what time it is and I'm still standing up in it. I always um, ask myself, like, with this current administration, if it was a Stonewall 2.0, where would I be in the line? Would I would be shaking things up or I would be the one flying? Because where everything is going, sometimes it feels like that. Like, okay, what if we completely reverse? Where would I be? Where is my position? And are the people around me, are they ready? Hey, how Hi, are you? Good, good to, to see you. you. We move forward by continuing to be visible, and we move forward by making our voices heard. In all of it, I'm really, really impressed with the leadership of trans people around the country. Like, people are, they're not shaken by this moment, and they're like, this is our moment to really move the things that are important to us and talk about intersectionality and talk about mm -hmm. the ways that all of these isms have impacted our lives for generations. You know, I'd like to think that like Sylvia and Marsha are like sort of smiling at us because they're like, well, finally, everyone's getting the airtime that they need, but also people are continuing to put their lives on the line to better everyone, but especially trans people. If you think of sort of the modern LGBT movement as we know it, I mean, it was built by trans women of color, and I think for the first time in history, we've sort of moved away from this uh, sort of upper middle class white narrative of LGBT rights. You know, we're post-marriage, and I think trans people are coming back to the center of this conversation in the leadership. You know, it's like, certainly I think there's backlash with increased visibility and representation, but like you look at sort of pose on TV right now, it's like everyone's watching it. Like my mom is watching it and I'm watching it. And this dialogue around like, it's a flashback to something that we aren't far away from. Correct. And I think people sadly are relating to its story, but it also is like, wow, like this is the history of our movement and these, these amazing leaders built something that like we have to give sort of justice to and we have to hold in this moment. Like mm -hmm. I'd like to think that, you know, many of our trans elders who are no longer with us, but those who are still are like, we've been waiting for this moment. Seeing people not only resisting, but reconstructing what we want the world to be is really powerful. Yeah, I think that's the common thread in everything I try to do, everything we do, is I'm always thinking about is how can we make the world better yeah. for trans kids. kids and of course all kids but really trans kids. kids I mean yeah. like that's my focus um, and so whether that's like doing a piece or whether that's like my day job you know it's, it's how can we make things easier you know make them feel more affirmed make more possibilities for them and opportunities you know so it's like you need housing you need to be able to believe you can be loved and that you're worthy of loving you need to see people like you telling stories and being represented in stories rather than other people instead telling those stories. So not only they're authentic, but you can see that you can tell your story right too. too. If this is what a world of love looks like, this is what like, our future looks like as trans people, it's beautiful. Next time on Trans Laugh. This is the size. It's a little hard to understand sizes with CC. Right. But 550 CC is equivalent to a C cup. <laughs>
Well, since the camera captures everything, there's no way to hide it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>